Hallelujah. Wow, this is another good morning. And I appreciate God's doing. We are, yesterday is gone. Today is a new beginning. So you can uh, enjoy yourself in the Lord. You can encourage yourself in the Lord and say you are greater than yesterday. You are, you are going higher more than yesterday because yesterday is gone. The problem that you are encountering is for yesterday. But this is a new morning. You can walk shoulder high saying that surely you know that you are Redeemer Rived. Yesterday we left a point whereby I said we are going for phase four whereby we said it is called a comprehension whereby you comprehend with the situation you 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 understand you change the way you see things you know sometimes we normally see the things the way we want to see the the, the when you you decide to see that your problem is bigger the bigger it will become when you decide that, that even if i have a problem it is nothing to me and it cannot change my day that is what a exactly will happen as the man weaken and so he is so this chance now this this uh, process number four God want you to change the way you see things because the way you see things it's not the truth sometimes when we are in this stage, we normally see and we, we normally take as if nobody cares for us, nobody loves us, but that is what you think. That is where you are. And you know the Bible says that the mind of a person is very decisive. You know, the, the, the heart is very decisive. And you see, that is Jeremiah 17, whereby the Bible says the heart is very decisive. What you think and what you feel is not the truth. The truth truth is in the Bible. The truth is in God. The truth is that God loves you and it's only that you are in process. You know, when God takes us to these processes, some people think that they are rejected, they are, uh, they are going through other cars or they are rejected, but that not, is not the truth. You remember, there was a son, the, 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 the son who told the father, I want to have my inheritance and he went away to a long distance and he went away to an upper, another country. He misused his wealth and when he came back he thought that the father hated him but what happened? The father embraced him and welcomed him and celebrated and clowned him with a clown. So what you are thinking right now is your mind but the mind of God is telling you I love you. You still have a space in me. You can still walk should high. You can still continue. You can and still go higher but your mind is telling you that now you are rejected you can go away you know uh -huh. You can, uh, you, uh, you will only change your behavior for a while. But once you decide that you will change your mentality, you will change forever. You cannot change until you decide to change the way you are thinking. You know what? The, uh, your eyes can only see what you are seeing, and you can only go uh, the far you can see. That is what the Bible says. And even, uh huh, we believe in it that you can only go as far as your, mama, your eyes can see. Now, God wants you to change the way you think, change the, the perspective, the way you see problem. Do you see the problem that they are big? No, you don't have to magnify problem. You are supposed to say, yes, there's a problem. It is okay, but I know I can change it. And you know, when you have that, uh, you change your mentality and you change your perspective, God will make things simpler. And even when you decide to change your mentality, things become easier. But when you magnify the problem, it become more greater. It become more bigger. And even crisis comes in like a friend, hallelujah. But in this change, uh, in this stage of comprehension, God wants to ch you to change the way you see the problem, the way you see yourself. How do you see yourself? Especially when you are in this process. Most of the people see themselves as if they can die tomorrow. Some of them, they, 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 they say, how do you see yourself anyway? As you are watching me, even right now, as I talk to you, how do you see yourself? Because 
because of the creditors who are threatening you, how do you see yourself? Because of the problem that you have, how do you see yourself? Because of the school fees that you're supposed to pay and you know for sure you are supposed to pay, how do you see yourself? Because the way you see yourself matters a lot. If I could not have seen myself as a pastor who can preach the gospel, I could not be preaching to you here because the same problem you encounter, I also encounter them. But the problem is, how do I take myself? How do I see myself? How do I change? How do I look at the things? How do I uh, deal with the problems? That is the only difference. We do face problem, all of us. And sometimes, uh, you know us, we, we, we assume as if uh, we come from heaven and then after preaching we go back to heaven. No, we are human beings and we face the same problem that you face. But the difference is how we handle our problem. And also, today I want to tell you that God is taking you for a process of comprehending so that you may change the way you see things, the way you carry things, the way you see yourself. If you see yourself as a greater woman, the greater you'll be. If you see yourself as a person who cannot go higher, you will never go higher. If you see yourself as somebody who can create things out of nothing, who can be in your own world, hallelujah, that is who you will become. If you see yourself as a queen, you will be a queen in your own world. So God wants you to comprehend and to change the way you see yourself and also the way you see others. Hallelujah. It is also another thing that is very important. How do you see others? Do you see others as if they are more greater than you? Do you see them as they are more smaller than you? Do you see them as their problem brought to you? You have to change the way you see them. And you change the way that you keep on complaining about others. Hallelujah. God wants you to change the way you see other people. You see as they are blessing. They are good people because you cannot live in this world alone. You ought to change the way you see people. Do not take people as that serious. It is only you. My friend, God wants you to enjoy life. But the way you take others, determine how you go. Determine how far you you can go. God wants you to change the perspective also about God. You know, a change, when you decide to change, you start with your mentality, you, uh, you, you go to other people, and then the way you see God. Hallelujah. I am, I, I, I thank God, because many people in the Bible saw God differently. If you talk to Jeremiah, in a situation, he could see a God who is a liar, and he said, and he could explain very well, oh God, you cheated me. You lied to me. Uh -huh. And I came to you. You overpowered me. It is because of you. Because you overpowered me. That is why I am in this situation. But God did not want him to see him like that. When you come to Moses, he did not know God as a deceiver. He knew God as a deliverer. The way you see God in your heart, determine how far you can go. In this process of comprehension, you need to change the way you see God himself. How do you see God? You start looking the situation in another new way. Begin to see things more clearly and begin to understand what is a little problem and begin to understand that it is going to change and begin to see it is a process that you are undergoing in due time it will come to, to see the problem will be over. Hallelujah. And you see when you uh, understand, when you comprehend, things become easier. In fact, you feel it's like you had a burden and now it is no more. Even you don't realize when, when, whether you are going through such a situation. Because if you fail to give it attention, it minimizes. But when you give it attention, it magnifies itself. So God wants you to comprehend and change the way you see yourself, the way you see other people, and the way you see God himself. It is very important at this stage 
courage to seek God. John number uh, John chapter 8 and verse 32. What that as the Bible says, the truth will set you free. When you know the truth, that the truth in this face it is to say that God wants you to comprehend. The truth is God is not done with you. The truth is the way you are you see yourself, that is you, you yourself. But God sees you differently. Aha. Uh -huh. The truth is God is still with you. The truth is it is a process that you are undergoing. The truth is God is not a liar. Even the preachers are not a liars because they told you you are going to be lifted but now you are demoted. It is a process. That is the truth. And this truth will set you free. In fact, listen to your problem. It is not really your problem. Your problem is the way you look at it. The problem you are feeling that you have, it is not your problem. It is the way. The problem is the way you look at it. Because you feel the whole world is on you. The whole world has come to you. And you are feeling, can't this world clock? And I get inside and I be covered. The way you take the problem, it is the problem itself. Hallelujah. But God wants you to change in this comprehension phase, in this process of comprehension. God wants you to change. And after you change, the process will be easier. I pray for you that you may easier and that you may change the way you think, the way you see things, the way you see God, the way you understand him so that you may easier. Because he did not promise us that this process will be easy. Instead, he said that I have realized that uh, uh, the, 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 the bread is not for the strong people, but all of them, they are given chances. That is why God has given you a chance to continue with the process, to continue. Don't quicken the process. Easy the way you think. Change the way you view things. And that one will work for you. We are going out for a break. And when we come back, we will continue to see what God wants us to do. Hallelujah. There is a number down the screen. Write to us. Let us know where you are watching us from. Let us know how you understand the world or how you uh, your views concerning the topic. And I know God will bless you. God bless you. Enjoy the worship. Hallelujah. Thank you for such a worship. We give God all the glory. And I normally tell you that it is only in CTN, especially during this morning hours of program arise, that you can enjoy such a worship. So I thank God for that. In case you are catching us up, we, uh, we went for a break where I was talking about comprehension as uh, process number four, which God uses to make sure that you go to another level. And I was saying that God normally uses to, uh, to comprehension that you have to cooperate with God understand the way you think change the way you are thinking change the way you see people change the way you take God and also change the way you see the problem the bigger the problem uh, uh, if you magnify it the way the, uh, and you feel it is so bigger it will become bigger now how do you feel in this process now after you have comprehended I told you do not stand at your own understanding because the heart that is very decisive. It will tell you you are hated, you are rejected, you are alone. But the truth is, you are not alone. God is with you. You are not going to die. You are, it is just a process. How do you feel? Now that you have begun to see the things in another dimension, you start feeling, yes, I can change. Hallelujah. Yes, I can change. Yes, I can continue. Now that I have understood this problem was not to finish me. Now that I have understood that this is a process that God is using to take me to another level, now I can continue you start getting little hope and you are contingent but you have got hope. They have become you have uh, been enlightened with the truth that the truth is you can still stand firm. You can still continue because other people are there like you and they are great men of God in the Bible but they tried. So you start changing things. You start changing your, uh, your ways and you start seeing God as Alpha and Omega. You start taking God 
God as the author of your future. You start seeing God as a problem solver. You start saying God as an increaser in everything he does. He does it perfectly and he does it in a manner that nobody else can question him. So when you are in that, you understand. You know, there are people in the Bible whom God uh, uh, made sure that they pass through this comprehension. When you talk of somebody like Abraham, God changed their name. And I want to tell you, if you comprehend with God, your name will change in this process. Hallelujah. God changed the name of Abraham to Abraham. God changed the name of Saul to Saul. Uh -huh. God changed Peter, meaning uh, the, the retro frog, until he was called a solid lock. God changed Jacob to Israel. In this situation, that is when God changes name. Hallelujah. If you comprehend with God and you assume nothing is happening, God is going to change your name. And when he changes your name, you become the kind of person he wants you to be. Now, yeah, yeah, because he was doing uh, phase, th this phase, he changes the name of so many people in the Bible. Uh, hey, he was helping them uh, uh, in, uh, to to welcome the newness in their heart. He was uh, helping them uh -huh, to become bigger or to see the other, the, the things in another perspective. He was helping them to know the truth. Whatever God is doing, my friend, it was to help you to understand that there is greater things more than you can imagine. But I want to warn you about this stage. When you are in, that, in this stage, when God is working in your life, you you start learning things. You start seeing things in another new direction and you start feeling it's like you are miserable in a way. But because God has changed you, because God has controlled your emotion, because you are never excited now, because now you have tested, you have started testing the, the, the glory of the Lord, because now it is not you who is living, it is God in you. Now you start knowing things, things that are different, these are, uh, you start doing the truth. Hallelujah. Now, the problem in the marriage is no longer a problem. You, uh -huh, you start recovering some of the things. You start hearing things in another dimension. You, 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 uh -huh, and you feel now you can continue. Praise the name of the Lord. Now this is the time. God wants you to know that he is there for you. And this is the stage that you, want to, you need to listen to God more than ever before. Because he speaketh. Hallelujah. In this stage of comprehension. God speaketh, God speaks to you and he whispers in you that what he wants you to do. What you need to do in this process, in this fourth process, you need to focus more on God. You listen more than you talk. Hallelujah. The problem with the people, they talk too much. Praise the name of the Lord. But in this stage, you need to keep quiet. You listen more, you talk less. You only talk where it is needed. And when you talk, make sure you talk sense. Hallelujah. Not every time you are supposed to be talking. Talk to the right people. Talk to the right place. Talk to, to, say the right thing at the right time. In this phase, number four of comprehension, God wants you, your concentration. You concentrate on him. You concentrate on what he's doing because he's changing things. First, you feel miserable, but at last, you see that you are free. Though you will feel miserable, though you will feel frustrated, though you will feel as if you have been deceived, but eventually, you will have known the truth. Knowing the truth and doing the truth, these are two different things. You need, so many people know the truth, but they don't do the truth. In this phase, you are supposed to know, where did I make mistake? Where what did I do? Or where, where, what went wrong and how? How did it start? When you 
start looking this at a different angle. Now, you ought to do the right thing. Know the truth and do the truth. The truth is, now I have known it is a process. I will not quit. I will trust God. I will look upon the Lord. I will keep my hope into the Lord. I will continue serving. God will meet you in your service. As you serve the Lord, God will meet you there. You know what? If Hannah could not be in the ministry, if Hannah could not be in the, in the house of God, when the angel was coming to bless others, he could not have been blessed. But he said, I know my Redeemer even. I know year after year, I have been coming here to Shiloh, but I believe in God that this year I will go out with my Samuel. So you are supposed to be busy working for God. Know the truth. The truth is that you cannot serve the Lord and remain the same. Go back to the ministry. Go back to the ministry. Serve the Lord here. Even when you are not needed, serve the Lord. People are not the one who called you in this situation. In this uh, process number four, you are supposed to give yourself back to the Lord. You are supposed to devote yourself to the Lord. Now you cannot see the mountain because the Bible says, and when you mature up, grow in maturity. Lord, serving God, serving the Lord, even when the problems are bigger, even when you are learning you don't have any coin in your pocket. Even when you cannot breathe, you can still serve the Lord. That shows the maturity. Now, in this process, serve the Lord your God, and God will see greatness in you. And in this whatever, in this level, God will change your name. Hallelujah. So many people this year want to be changed their name, but show us the process. You want to be named after a bigger preacher. You want to be known as a good evangelist. Him, show us the process. If you want to become a good teacher, show us the perseverance. Hallelujah. If you want to become a, 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 a dramist, what have you occurred? What have you done? The process. You, this does not come pop. They don't, they does not come abruptly. Process matters. Hallelujah. And the Bible says uh, the wisdom, uh, in, in, if you read in Proverbs chapter 24 and verse 3, by the wisdom the house is built and through the understanding it is established. It is by the wisdom of God that now you will stand. After going all those processes and still there is a process number five and number six and we are going to look for it. But now when you come to this process, it's like you are maturing now. It's like now you can you can be entrusted with a few things. Now God can entrust you with yourself. You know there are people who are not trusted even for themselves. But this stage now qualifies you. God can trust you with yourself. God can trust you with your heart. God can trust you with your body to take care of because you no longer see what is around you. You never tell you you never see the problem with others. You never see the problem with God. You don't blame God all the time. You see and you understand it is a process and you continue. Let us go to the process. Uh, uh, uh -huh. Let's continue and say that uh, whenever God is doing this, he is not frustrating you. And when I go to phase number five, now we are, we are going to see what normally God does. Uh -huh. Before we come to that, I want to tell you, uh -huh. I want to tell you because I know I have done it. It happens to you every Sunday. If you don't watch out, you will feel to go even to the service because you feel you are frustrated and you know before God changes your, your song, before God changes your name, people will adulate you. People will mistreat you. People will misquote you. But I want to tell you, this is a process that you need to tell people. I don't care what you say. I don't care how you understand me. I don't care even the way you take me. For I know it is a process. And I am in a process. And process does not last for longer. It will 
cease and I will stand firm and I will continue. I want to pray for you. And when we come back tomorrow morning, we are going to talk about the, uh, the, the, the process number five. That is a conduct, how you behave. But now I want us to pray because I know God loves you and God knows you. And I, and, and I know you have comprehended. And I thank God because he's taking us a process. And you know, when I'm preaching to you, I'm also preaching to myself. And I, I thank God because where we started is not where we are. Let us pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we come before you. We just thank you. We did not know that we need to comprehend with you so that our things may be easier. We did not know that we are supposed to look upon heaven so that the problem we are facing may become easier. Help us to understand. Help us to know. Help us not to be full enough to, to stand with our own understanding. Let us lean on you because you are Alpha and Omega. We thank you and we love you because you are mighty. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you for watching me. I was your pastor, Martha Mboche from Kariobagi South, and I love you so much. There is a number down the screen. Write to us. Let us know where you are. Let us know where you are watching us from. Let us know how you feel about the topic, and I know God will bless you. Until we meet tomorrow morning, the same hour, the same program, and the same station, welcome tomorrow morning, and God bless you. Shalom, shalom, shalom. God bless you.